Hello and welcome to the Proverbs 31 Ministries morning show. My name is Nicole Moses and I'm with my co-host Ashley Jackson. Hi, uh, it's so exciting to be on this side of the morning show again. I'm usually on the back side helping produce and all that stuff, yes. but today I get to be on this side. So I'm very excited to be here. And yes. Nicole, how are you? Oh, Ashley, I'm good. Can I be <laughs> honest though? It's yes. been a weird week. Oh, really? It's like one of those weeks where just like random life things are like going wrong, like my car air conditioning and my apartment air conditioning went no. out this oh. week. And so I had to deal with that. <laughs> but we're back. We're, we're getting cold air. Thank goodness. We need that. Right? Yes. <laughs> How are you, Ashley? I am good. I don't know about you guys, if you have kids, but we are actually finally on summer break and man, that year just flew by. Yes. Um, so now I'm going to hear a lot. I'm bored and can I have a snack? <laughs> yeah every five seconds but you know we deal with it yeah uh, but the flip side of that is you know the slow mornings not having to get everyone out the door so I do love that mm -hmm. and um something else I love just about the summer and that slowness mm -hmm. is just kind of you know taking some time to maybe think of some different things I don't maybe normally have time yeah. to um I work in the social media team and I also run my own social media account and so I feel like in the summer the Lord asks me to take some time off and so I can really kind of reconnect with him. What does he want to teach me? What does he want to grow in me? Um, because it's so much slower, I can kind of focus more on that. Like, do you yeah. do anything like that? You know, I haven't done anything like that in the past, but I would definitely like to. Mm. And, you know, I'm doing um, fighting words um, with our OBS study right now. And it's so good. It's like, it's memorizing scripture. It's short. And I feel like it's something I can kind of go back to every year. Um, I love the idea of memorizing scripture yeah. and having that sort of like written on your heart and just at the top of your mind. And so I don't know, I think that might be my summer tradition. Yeah, I love it. Well, I think that the topic we're going to tackle today is so important and it's something that we can really meditate on and just use to renew our minds. Mm. Um, and that is, we're going to be talking about truths for when you question who you are. Yes. And so Ashley, I have a question. Okay. When in your life or in what areas um, do you tend to question who you are? Okay. So if I'm really honest, I have a lot of them, so be prepared. <laughs> and uh, I guess it happens a lot, but I realized recently that everyone kind mm -hmm. of struggles with self-doubt and self-criticism, but because I only live in my own mind, I, it always seems like, oh, everyone has their act together yeah. and everyone's perfectly fine and they don't struggle. But I think like we all really do. Yeah. Um, so I guess, um, yeah, one of them would be, who do you think you are? Yeah. So whether that is trying something new or stepping out in faith, if God is like asking me to do something, I think like, well, who do you think you are? I'll think that about myself and question like, you know, did God really say that? Yeah. Um, did God really call you to that? And I like have a mixture of being scared and being embarrassed. Yeah. Think, yeah. yeah, totally. You know, I can think of when I was in high school, like forever ago, I sort of had that when it was like time to apply for colleges and it was like, what, who do you think you are applying to mm. this school? Like who, who do you think you are to like, think you could go there? And you know, it stopped me from applying to a really? lot of places. Okay. Yeah. Just that like self doubt. Um, and God works everything out and right. it, everything right. happened the way it should have, but it definitely that created some doubt and insecurity in me. And, you know, for those of you watching, if you relate, yes. let us know in the Please. comments. We have your comments right here. So in the chat, maybe put a little heart emoji if you relate to this. We've got this open the whole time. So pop in, we'll read your comments yes. off. We love hearing from you guys and letting you be a part of the show. Yes. So what's another thought we might have? Okay, so another thing that I don't know, I feel like it might be common mm -hmm. to all of us, but is the thought like look at how much better she is than mm -hmm. you at fill in the blank mm -hmm. um we work with a lot of amazing beautiful talented people mm -hmm. and it sometimes can be intimidating because you get in your head and you think yeah. like 
oh, she's more beautiful than me. She's more talented than me. Mm-hmm. And sometimes even like, she's more spiritual yeah. than me. Like, I wish I had her relationship um, with God. And sometimes that kind of thinking can lead me into like a dark and bitter place. Yeah. Like, sometimes. Oh my gosh. I totally relate. I think it feels like maybe God held out on me a little bit. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, God blessed like these women with so much. They have so many blessings they're so like like you said they're smart beautiful spiritual and I'm like (laughs) can you share a little bit of that yeah and you know I think like they're so confident they're Mm -hmm. so sure of themselves and that's something that like I want and how do I get that and so I totally relate yeah when I think it's so crazy that I just have to like take a minute and point out is that like I would never think that mm, about you. Yeah. You know, and I think that's so true. It's like, we are so much more mean to yeah. ourselves. Oh my gosh. So, than anyone so else true. in our lives. Would yeah. Be. <laughs> yeah. Okay. What's another thought that we may have? Okay. So another one for me is either that God is disappointed in me. Oh. You know, that maybe I'm not obeying or, you know, I'm not praying or spending as much time in his word. Um, and he's disappointed in me in that way. But sometimes I think even scarier is the place where I kind of get into this place where I am disappointed with God. Yeah. And I start thinking things like, what, like, does he not love me as yeah. much as he loves somebody else because he's not answering my prayers and just like struggling with like that disappointment? Oh, totally. Yeah. I think that, you know, if your life isn't how you kind of thought it would be, mm-hmm. if you're not where you thought you would be at this age. Or, you know, maybe you graduated college and you thought you'd have a great job and live in a new city and really start your life, but maybe that hasn't happened for you. Maybe that's harder. Maybe, you know, you thought you would be married or have a child by now, or, you know, I think we all have plans for our lives. We all, and there are certain things that we want so bad. Yeah. And sometimes it doesn't happen or it takes longer and it's so easy to be disappointed that God hasn't done right. that for us. Yeah. And I think it, it's kind of hard to get out of that place. Totally. You can get stuck there. For yeah, sure. for yeah. sure. Well, I'm seeing you guys in the comments. I'm seeing so many hearts and thank you for it. Yeah. Me and Ashley aren't so <laughs> yeah, alone in this. Alone. <laughs> um, but I think it's clear that we all battle these things. And so one thing that we can take some time to do this summer is really take our thoughts captive and make them obey what Jesus says about us. Let me read this first. I'm sure we're all familiar with it, but if you could just, you know, clear your mind and let this verse almost be like the first time you've ever heard it. Okay. It's 2 Corinthians 10, 5, which says, we destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive to obey Christ. Okay. Okay. So like you said, I've heard this verse a lot and I'm, maybe you guys have heard it too. And I always really focus on like the take the thoughts mm-hmm. captive part, but reading it or hearing you read it again, I, I really focused on the, we demolish mm-hmm. what yeah. every thought that sets itself up against yeah. the knowledge of God. And those words are very strong. Yeah. Like action words. Yes. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> I imagine like like actively like destroying Destroying it. it. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, the arguments and like all the opinions that are against the knowledge of God, Mm -hmm. those lies that are coming to sit in our head, they ultimately take us away from Mm -hmm. God's truth. And that impacts every area of our lives. Okay. So I have a question about that. Like what you just said. So if we choose not to take our thoughts captive Mm -hmm. or demolish those like ideas, what what's the outcome of that? Oh man. Well, for sure. I think we can't have an impact on the kingdom of God, Wow. which, well, if I, I yeah. want to, I want to, yeah, I, I think mean, we all would. Yeah. yeah. And you know, if we don't believe the things that God has called us to, mm. or, you know, created us for, if we don't believe we can do those things, we're just going to stay right where we are. That's we're not so going to take that step out and faith. we're not, not going to make that impact that God created us to have and to do. Um, And, you know, I think of like, what if there are people that Mm. God wants us to bless or Mm. to help or to guide? um, But because we believe the lie, we weren't obedient. We don't actually get to touch that person. Wow. 
that's like kind of a huge thought when yeah. you stop and think about it, that when we choose to believe lies about ourselves, mm-hmm. we're actually withholding blessing from other people. Yeah. That's why <laughs> I know. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. And another thing is relationships. Mm. You know, I think, um, if we believe the lie that people don't like us or we're not wanted or we're not accepted, we might struggle having close relationships yeah. with people. Yeah. You know, if you walk into a room and the first thing in your mind is nobody wants me here. Nobody likes me. I've had this. <laughs> I've yeah, had these too. thoughts like, <laughs> I should just go like, nobody wants me here, yeah. you know? And, and that's so hard. And I think like when we have that in our minds, we're sort of, we think we're protecting ourselves, right? Yeah. By not putting ourselves out there. Yep. We're so afraid of that rejection that we think we're going to have. Yep. But really what we're doing is we're pushing people away. We're yeah. not even giving them the chance to know us because we're already sort of in defense yeah. because of that lie that's playing in our head. Oh, that's so true. And I tell all my friends this, and so they've all heard it before, but you are also my friends. So I'm <laughs> going to tell you as well. Um, that it, when I have gone to my counselor, some, I really struggle with this exact topic. And she pointed out to me, she said, whatever lie that we believe is true in our lives, we go into our lives uh, looking for evidence mm, that we're right so about that. And we, we want to be right in, because that's our human nature. We want to yeah. be right. And so we end up kind of, like you said, pushing people away. But I have to remind myself all the time, like, don't let your feelings be mm. the boss of you. Yes. <laughs> like, and that yes. is like this shift that we're trying to make here from yeah. our feelings to God's word. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, it, that reminds me of something my pastor at church said this past Sunday that really has stuck with me. Um, he said that if we're in a car, our feelings are always in the car with us. They're just not in the driver's seat. And that is such a good reminder that they're, it's always with us. We're yeah. carrying it with us, but it doesn't dictate That's our really lives. Good. And I have a hard time with that. So, <laughs> well, this is why we're sharing this. We want us to feel a little less alone, everyone to feel like, hey, we all struggle with this. Um, But we also want to share a really great free resource with you. You can print it out and work through it this summer. And we pray it will really help you remember exactly who God says you are. So we're going to drop the link to that in the comments right now. Yeah, and I just wanted to show you what it looks like. It's right here. And when you print it out, there's actually spaces. And the question actually is on here. Who do you think you are? Wow. (laughs) And I, I then that. you can actually write down who you actually are because mm. of what God says about you. And they have all these references. So Nicole, will you give us an example? Yeah, of I would love to. So I would love to read Ephesians 1, 4, which says, even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him in love. So what does this tell us about who we are? It tells us that we're chosen. Yeah, that's so good. Okay, so we're going to break it down just a little bit more because I know it's one yes. thing to know something of what God says, but it's a whole nother thing to oh, practice it yes. in our actual lives. Okay, so a lesson from probably both of our lives <laughs> is that whole thing that Cole mentioned earlier. It was like you show up into a room, maybe you fear rejection. So you come in with a thought like, I bet nobody here likes me. Yeah, I've definitely yeah. had that thought and or that fear, really, it's a fear. And so one way that we can shift our thoughts is to say, you know, actually I am, I'm chosen and I'm accepted by God. Mm -hmm. And so I don't have to fear that. And then we shift can shift our focus to, instead of being afraid that people don't like me, Mm -hmm. what I'm going to do is look for someone who I can make sure knows they are like, and like immediately, even just like saying that out loud makes me feel like excited. Like I have a mission to find someone to make them feel accepted. And it helps us to like think of others. Even, yeah, you know? I love that. I think that we have a tendency to focus so much on ourselves, especially in situations like that. Yeah, I can so get true. so in my head that I'm like aware of like yes. exactly how I'm coming off of my like body, of everything. Totally. Yep. And I think it just shifts our focus mm-hmm. from away from us yeah. and onto others. And I just think that's such a great practice mm-hmm. to yeah. make someone else feel like they are loved, they are liked, they are wanted and welcome. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. This is so cool to yeah. like have this conversation. And I'm just so excited that 
I would love for us to all stack hands and say, mm-hmm. this is the summer that we practice believing the truth of who God says we are. Yes. It might take some practice. It might totally. take a couple yeah. of times, yeah. um, but that's okay yes. because the Lord wants us to live free in who he says we are. So don't forget to grab the link for that in the comments. Yes. This is such a great thing to just think about and tackle like for all times in our lives and like Nicole said it's going to take some practice but I think it's going to be so worth it so let me pray for us as we attempt to do this in our lives Lord we just thank you so much that you are good and you put these truths in your word in order to set us free you don't want us to be trapped in these lies and then that the lies that then become our reality and the things that we live out of and it affects our relationships and the choices that we make in our life. And you don't want that for us. You want us to know who you say that we are so that we can run with freedom and passion and share your gospel with the people that are lost and that need that truth and joy that, that you want to give us. So I pray, Lord, that you would equip us and empower us to do that and set us free by knowing who you say we are. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, friends, we're so glad that you joined us today. We hope to see you for our next show on Thursday, June 23rd, as we discuss, where do I go from here? Mm. Six ways to start healing, even when you're still hurting. So we hope to see you there. Thank you for joining us. Bye. Bye.